Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce you to electronic suspension, what it is, how it works, and what benefits it might bring you as a rider. Just cover off a few basics. Now this Fox Live Valve technology, which we're looking at today, would be of very little interest to me if it wasn't paired to a great bike. So we have got the Giant Trans Advanced X Elite. So it's really important to understand that we're looking at an e-bike system here today. The Jan Trance is a great all-rounder with a ton of features, 140, 150 mil travel, and geometry which has been designed for the constant climbing and descending that we do on e-mountain bikes. Remember too, there's the e-bike system. So at the heart of this is Giant Sync Drive Pro motor. Now, the great thing about this motor is you can have, have it either as a full power e-mounted bike, 85 Newton meters, or tune it down to say 35, 45, or 50. So not only is it fully adjustable, it's also one of the lightest full power e-mounted bikes on the market. It's got other things too, automatic mode, Maestro suspension, and some great component parts. Quite possibly one of the most technologically advanced, but definitely not the most expensive. There are EMTBs more expensive than this with a lot less tech. This bike is the Elite Zero, but giant live valve bikes start at four figures, not five. Now, before we get into some more nitty gritty, it's good to get the perspective of an engineer. So a few weeks ago, I spoke to the main man, Joost from Giant. So the first version was more, a little bit more on the XC side. It was quite a firm, firm setup. It made a light and day difference uh, when it automatically would change uh, and would close up. It, it would change the whole character of the bike. The new version is much more trail oriented, more open and uh, enhances the capability of a trail bike much more and lends itself better to a trail bike. Now, we really want to know what you guys think of Fox Live Valve. Is it something that you'd use? If so, why would that be? And if not, why not? So please get involved in some questions down below. Any queries or questions you have surrounding Fox Live Valve, we're going to tackle those in a second video uh, about this whole e-bike system and electronic suspension. What then is the aim of Live Valve? Well, it's quite simple, to help riders of all different skill levels to get an EMTB that is as efficient as possible in terms of suspension, up, down, along and across, in a diverse range of environments worldwide. Along and across, is that not the same thing, many of you might be asking? Well, no, not at all, because across is possibly more of a camber situation like we've got here. So that is a key place to get your balance right and where tech such as Live Valve will keep you in a good position. It's also important to understand why e-mountain bikes are very different to mountain bikes. EMTBs allow us to cover around twice the amount of territory that an MTB would cover in the same time. That's why I think electronic suspension will have a place for some people. But more than this, for some riders, it will also be about the challenging terrain covered with increased speed. Now, I've recently been using automatic shifting as an example, and I believe there is a performance advantage with certain tech, simply because of the pace at which we can cover ground on EMTBs. So what is the benefit of Live Valve? Well, I think the main benefit is the peace of mind that you're gonna have the best suspension setup possible without having to think and also without having to act. So you're not gonna have to make a decision on the trail. You're not gonna have to get off the bike to make an adjustment. I think that is very much at the heart of Live Valve. Few examples, guys, of Live Valve in action. Now on a climb like this, It tunes out pedal movements, but not to the extent of locking the bike out. So it still allows the bike to track and grip, which is really important on an e-mountain bike. So here's a great example. I've been descending on some really smooth single track for quite a few hundred meters. And all of a sudden, boom! Um. 
Whoa! Whole pile of trouble. So what was occurring there was that the suspension was keeping me firm, propped up in the smooth single track. And then the second I got involved in these routes, the suspension opened up and prrr, prrr. Now here's an absolute classic. Uh, I want to have a good firm rear to the bike because if the back is soft, then there's a tendency for me to be wheeling or struggling for control in the front. So I haven't got to get off the bike, put more air in the shock or uh, adjust a lockout. This bike is adjusted automatically as I'm climbing. The biggest difference with live elf compared to a non live elf equipped bike is in the climbing. When you're descending, it's it's designed to be open. It's it's by that point uh, not an electric shock. It's an open system. But when you're climbing, that's when it really comes alive, where it helps you to stay up higher in, in your shock travel. It helps you to lean over a bit more on the front wheel. It helps you to, to keep that steady body position and weight transfer on the front wheel. And so that's really allows you to be more efficient. It's not about making the bike more efficient, it's about making the rider more efficient because you can keep your body position, you can keep charging, you can keep riding and that really aids the efficiency. It's helping you be more efficient, not so much the bike. So how does all this magic work, you might well ask? Well, there are sensors in both your fork and shock that control your suspension whilst you're riding. Now these are taking information off the trail a thousand times per second and making changes within the fork and shock, making decisions on how to have the best setup. And so deep within your suspension here, you've got inclinometers, accelerometers, algorithms. Yep, it's all going on. So what then are the actual parts that make live valve work? Now these are the things that you need to familiarize yourself with uh, on the bike. So you've got the controller, now that measures the incline, the decline and the flat. Uh, you've got sensors in both the fork and the shock which are recording the g-forces continually. Obviously you've got some wires here and there but for me the one bit that I really really like about Live Valve is the Live Valve app. It is really user-friendly uh, and you can navigate your way around it uh, super easily and within that you've got the settings and the presets which I'll go into next. Uh, and finally, uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into the Fox Live Valve. Although, do remember, we're going to follow this video up with a tech Q&A with engineers from both Fox and Giant. Now, there are five settings on this bike. A climb, firm, comfort, sport and open. Uh, they all give you a different feeling depending on what type of trail you ride. So there's something in Fox Live Valve for anybody in any place on the earth. Uh, but what you can do is you, you can actually customize the sensitivity uh, of each setting within the app. And I, like I said, the app or the controller on the bike is where you do all the uh, tuning. Now we're really eager that this was a introduction into Live Valve. Uh, remember, we're now going to follow this up with a uh, tech Q&A with Fox and Giant. So any questions or detail you think we need to expand on of Fox Live Valve, uh, dive in the comments down below and we'll see you in a couple of weeks time.